Hi, I've got another fun project for you to share with your students um, or to do yourself today. Uh, today I've got a video step-by-step -step showing how I uh, created a fake turkey and cheese sandwich. This is another project that uh, I had my, my design students uh, who were registered for a special topics class in props making. I had them do in the fall of 2020 um, while we were uh, switching online due to COVID-19. And uh, it's another fun and simple uh, kind of self-guided project that you can do with your students. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, view the play of the slideshow for you. Okay, so getting started. The first thing I'm going to do is use a piece of uh, sandwich bread. And again, I apologize for the glitch in the with this photo. Uh, the pattern that I'm making, uh, I'm just tracing the piece of bread onto a brown paper bag and cutting that out. So here it is traced, and then here it is cut out. For the bread, I am using one half inch project foam. I did purchase a roll of foam from the craft store, but uh, some craft stores will sell you foam by the yard, so it just depends on, on how you'd like to proceed with that. This half inch foam is the perfect thickness for the bread. So I trace the pattern onto the foam, and then using very, very sharp scissors, I cut the pieces of bread out of the foam, and you will notice that it does have a little bit of a ragged edge on it, so you will want to kind of clean that up by holding the bread and gently going along the edges to take off any dramatic um, jagged areas off of that, smooth it out. Okay, so the next thing I wanted to do was to create a piece of turkey. And at the craft store, I picked up some kind of a tan, light tan felt and using the bread pattern as a scale guide, I tried to trace an oval that was very similar to the size um, that you might get if you were buying deli turkey from the store. And I just traced it on there with pencil. Here I'm showing you the felt. Um, it's cream felt. It comes in a 9 by 12 sheet. And I cut three pieces of the felt out and then on the piece of foam bread, you can see here, I, I'm practicing how I'm going to, to arrange them onto the bread. The next thing I wanted to create was a slice of tomato. I purchased some foam sheets at the craft store and I used a coaster that I had in my house that seemed like the about the right size for a, a large kind of beefsteak tomato that you would use for slicing. And I put that um, on my foam and I cut out two of them. Next I needed some cheese and I had a little bit of difficulty finding uh, the right color for the cheese. This was pretty bright yellow um, but I, out of all the choices that they had it was the best choice. So I went ahead and, and got this and then I'm going to use some paint to adjust the color on that as needed. And you can see here on the right, I've, I'm arranging, kind of practicing to see how the size of everything is working out. Next, I had to create some lettuce. And, you know, lettuce can be created with um, tissue paper. I chose to use a piece of green fabric I found at the craft store. And I drew, using my bread pattern, two pieces of lettuce, just kind of using a squiggly edge, um, but again, you could do this with tissue paper if you wanted to. Um, I thought that this uh, variegated green quilting fabric would work uh, nicely for the, for the lettuce, so I, I chose that. You'll notice that I chose the wrong side of the fabric as opposed to the right side of the fabric to trace onto so that I could um, not have any of my pencil lines show, and I just cut them out with scissors. Next, I wanted to add the um, crust edge of my bread. So I mixed up some Mod Podge and some uh, folk art paint, acrylic paint, to come up with the um, color that I wanted. Now, I did have a research page that I created with three different photos of uh, turkey sandwiches that I liked. 
And so I was using that research image all along the way to match color and texture. Next, I used um, some cream colored uh, craft acrylic paint to paint the tops of the bread to get that blocked in. And I did make it kind of variegated. I had um, little dips of paint um, that I could use to create like maybe little toastier colored areas. I don't, I didn't want the, the color of the bread to be flat all one color. I wanted to have a little bit of variation um, in the color. So then I let that dry and you can see the areas here a little bit better of um, where the bread was lighter and darker in different places. Before I cut out the lettuce, I did line the edge, the pencil edge, with some tacky glue and let it dry so that when I cut it, the fabric would not ravel. So I'm just creating a little glue line along there that seals off the threads and keeps it from um, unraveling when I go to cut it. And that's it, it drying. Next, I was trying to adjust um, the color of my tomatoes. So I mixed up some color and um, started working on trying to create some realistic looking tomatoes. Um, and here on the left hand side, this was, you know, a lot of paint work that I did looking at um, pictures of tomatoes. But then I realized, oh my gosh, I spent all that time doing that kind of painterly work and most of it wouldn't, wouldn't show. But what did show um, looked really nice. So I'm glad at the end of the day that I took the time to, to do that paint work. And then here you can see on the right hand side, um, me trying to kind of tone down that bright, bright yellow of the cheese and make it a little bit less um, punchy. So I decided to do a uh, Colby Jack cheese, uh, which has a little bit of the white. It's kind of a variegated uh, cheese. So um, I started doing that here on the right. You can see that. On the left, I had an idea when I was at the craft store um, picking up some different kinds of foam. I saw these little kind of egg-shaped pieces of foam that were really small. And I thought, wow, that would be, that'd make a really great decorative olive to put on top of my sandwich. So, I mean, certainly you don't have to do that, but um, I decided to do that. So I, I just stuck it into another piece of foam with uh, a skewer so that I could paint it and it wouldn't be rolling around. Um, that's why I did that there. Now I've got some gloss varnish. Um, I'm gonna be doing some of my um, final treatments with uh, sealing, sealing the sandwich. The edge of the tomato in particular, I felt like it wasn't shiny enough, so I went back in with the gloss and I touched that edge of the, each tomato to make it look like the skin was, was still shiny. And then I also started gluing the pieces of my, uh, my sandwich together, so I got it um, assembled. Here is a final photo of my sandwich. I decided that I wanted the bread to sort of look like oat wheat bread. And so you'll notice that on the top, of like where the top of the loaf would be, I tried to um, paint in what kind of felt like little pieces of oatmeal that were stuck to the top of the bread and that some flour had gotten stuck to them. And then you'll notice my little um, olive, I painted it green and I made it look like it had a little, uh, what is it called, a little um, slice of uh, red pepper. So it was like a Spanish, a Spanish olive um, on top, on top to decorate it like you would get it at deli. So this is my final turkey and cheese sandwich. And I hope that you enjoy making one of your own and or um, having this be, or some variation of this uh, project be available to your students someday. Take care.